Well, it's good to know that my Wickham team in this series is not the only Wickham that's doing really well. Uh, in real life, Wickham have just reached the League One playoffs and he was hoping that they can get promoted and join us in the Championship, even though they'll be doing it about four years earlier than us. Who cares? Happy to see Wickham doing well and I really hope that they actually achieve promotion. Up the chair, boys! Hello and welcome back to episode 21 of Unemployed to Legend here with Wickham Wanderers. My name is Craig and coming up in today's episode we have two championship matches away at Nottingham Forest and home against Huddersfield Town which will be our first match on the telly this season. Uh, since you're last with me you can see from the league table very good start. Very good start to life in the championship as we are over halfway to that 50 point total and a lot of that has to to do with the fact that thankfully we've been continuing to pick up a, a lot of points both at home and starting to pick up points as well away from home before uh, even after the last episode of course our only away win of the season had actually come at Millwall which was about two episodes ago in and of itself since then we've basically tried to make ourselves hard to beat uh, that loss here against Bristol City notwithstanding it was so frustrating that game because they took the lead and then there was no highlight for 70 minutes, despite me making changes <laughs> throughout the game. And until right at the very end when Bristol City then scored. It was just infuriating and it's just made me mad at the match engine itself. Thankfully we recovered with a two, sorry, 3-1 victory at home against Swansea in our last match. Before we now have Nottingham Forest and Huddersfield in this episode. As mentioned, this is going to be our first match on the telly. We're not exactly going to get much money for it, but hey, it's, it's all... A good start. We don't seem to get much money actually for the TV matches. Interesting. Are we just getting uh, money for highlights then or something? Is this going to be like the Football League show just revisited on the uh, BBC like they used to do a few years ago? Regardless, uh, we obviously were aiming to again go and get the three points, get ourselves closer to the 50 point mark, which is our aim this season. At the moment, we've got 27, minimum 23 points needed. The aim at the moment is if we keep ourselves in or around the playoff position, I don't expect us to finish in the playoffs, but if we're around there, then I know that we will be having a good season. So this is going to be the 11 that we're going to be sending out. Patterson in goal, Grieg Young, who will only be making his second start for the club. He started against Crystal Palace uh, a few games ago. I didn't show that result actually, did I? Um, amazingly, we went to Palace and we smacked them 4-1. Can you see that score? Yeah, you can. We smacked them 4-1 at their own grounds. I, I couldn't believe we did that. And Grieg Young was the starting left back in that one because Bueno was a little bit tired uh, for that game because it was a midweek game. But I just thought we're throwing him into the fire and he performed. See, he got an assist in that game. Uh, generally, he was getting up and down that left flank very, very well as Chapman was cutting in on the left-hand side. Uh, Critchlow, Stewart and McCarthy, the rest of the back four, I've... I've spoken about Anthony Stewart recently in the last episode actually. He has been dropped but he's now come to me saying he wants game time and he's a team leader. So I kind of have to keep him sweet if I'm going to keep him and the rest of my squad on side. Chances are I will try and offload him in the January transfer window because especially he's 34 years old now. He's not going to get much game time. He is declining physically. Certainly he is declining more technically as well declining. His mentals will be strong but other than that no the man can't jump anymore in fact what is his jumping reach 11 and you can't even jump sweet goodness we, we have to sell him on before that gets worse uh hutchins at the base in midfield with mally and dimitru ahead of him in midfield chapman on the left wing and scully and tyler smith up front tyler smith back in the squad after being dropped he's been back for the past five games and he's rewarded me with five goal contributions three goals two assists he is a poacher in every sense of the words every time a ball goes into the box. Nine times out of ten he'll be there. And I hope that continues today. Five goals, five assists from 11 starts. Lovely stuff. Uh, Ricky J. Jones. The reason actually Smith came back in. Jones was actually injured. As was Matty Pollock. Which is why he had the likes of Alfie Jones in defence. Although Jones has been playing as a midfielder in recent times as well. But we'll give Stuart a chance. I need to keep him sweet. 
as long as possible while he is here. He's a team leader. I'm hoping though once we do sell him on and Curtis Thompson because I do think Thompson, he hasn't really played much this season, but I do think he's going to be going in January potentially as well. Oh, actually, uh, Patterson's inspired and motivated, so I'll tell you what, we'll leave it as that. But both of those guys, Thompson and Stewart, are both team leaders, and I am hoping we move them on in January. Other players will step up. McCarthy is also a team leader as well. Um, but I, I want to keep him as long as is humanly possible while he's still able to perform. As McCarthy, there is the man himself, McCarthy, cleaning up in defence, just very calm and collected on the ball. Fitzpatrick is starting to be a bit like that as well. As Smith has the ball here, he is through, and there is the poacher himself. Okay, he's making runs, but that's what you want. You want your poacher to get into the area just like that. Beautiful stuff here. Who actually made that play? Was it Scully? Yes, it was. Scully receiving the ball from Dimitri, who's involved yet again, and Smith coolly finishes in the bottom corner. I mean, if Smith and Ricky J. Jones uh, compete with each other for goals this season... Then that's only going to be good for the team, isn't it? Jones, of course, was scoring before he went injured. The injury he had was a gashed leg. So, of course, that means two weeks out because football manager doesn't understand what bandages are. But it means that Tyler Smith has got himself second wind in the team. He did start the season, of course, up front for us um, before dropping out. He is now back in and scoring the goal. So that is absolutely fine. And there is Romany Critchlow. Is I didn't see how many goals he's got this season. He scored a couple of those headers at least. But good to see him on the score sheet as well. He's a player who's been not that happy with his game time, despite the fact he's playing most games. It was only when I went in to have a look at his happiness, I saw his important player. So I'm like, okay, so he needs to play the majority of games. Uh, Stewart isn't an important player anymore. He's down to regular starter. Thankfully, he wasn't going to get angry about that which was good news for us because I can ill afford that with my team leaders as we all know team leaders if they get angry and your squad agrees to them and not not good it's not good times when that happens there is Dimitri our deep line playmaker he seems to swap between that and central midfielder there is Scully oh what a finish first time on the half volley Smith uh, playing provider this time but Dimitri pulling some strings in midfield as should be the case with your deep line playmaker I haven't played a deep line playmaker regularly since FM20. It's been a bit of a revelation again. And it was a sort of spur of the moment thing in uh, on deadline day. That's just gone. I'm thinking I need a midfielder who can do something a little bit different. Which is what Dimitri can do. I mean, as far as playmakers go, I think uh, Mali and Hutchins can play there as well. But Dimitri is probably the best one at it. As Chapman feeling a little left out as far as goal scoring goes. He... Bagged a hat-trick against uh, Crystal Palace, which blew my mind. And he feels like he needs a few more goals himself. So he's going to start getting selfish, is he? I, I mean, if you insist, it's not that Chapman can't score at all. As Dimitri is very, very tired. Uh, so we're probably going to have to think about subbing him in the second half. Uh, very happy with the way things are going. Let's just have a quick look at the conditioning here. Our midfield is very, very tired. They are working hard. Dimitri especially. Good grief. Um... He's on support? Oh, right, because Hutchins is on defend. Okay, cool. So we're going to be looking at a couple of substitutions in our midfield. Also, probably going to be looking at McCarthy being substituted in the second half as well. I want Fitzpatrick to have a little more game time, especially as he continues his development. Uh, he's, he's still 19 years old. He's got time, but obviously we want to be making use of the fact he is a Welsh under 21. He's still playing regularly for them. So clearly the Welsh... National team sees something in him, even if he is in the under 20 at the moment. But obviously, I feel if he gets more game time, then uh, he might actually get into the main squad, which would be nice to have a uh, Welsh international in our squads. So I think uh, if we're going to have an international again, we've had a Guadalupean international, of course, when uh, Davy Ruyard was here, he's their goalkeeper. I think, and Abita, of course, he's still an international for Uganda. As there is Smith again. What a goal. So Harry Chapman providing, uh, well, actually being a provider. <laughs> the providing a provide. What? That doesn't make sense. But he is the provider here. Not, not on the score sheet this time at the moment, but I'm very happy for him to be an assist man. And Smith, with his second goal of the game, he's on a nice little purple patch and long may that continue. But yeah, internationals wise, uh, obviously, Obita is still a current international 
as mentioned, Fitzpatrick, under-21 international. Is there any others? Oh, Claudio Gomez, of course, because he played at the World Cup in the summer just gone. Which was very, very nice to see. That's not very, very nice to see. Uh, Wickham, sorry, Nottingham Forest uh, getting a goal back here. We'd rather not let them back into the game. Thank you very much. We don't want to see that. As actually, Dimitri is looking very, very tired now. We are going to take him off. Oh, um, I've just realised I haven't got Thompson. I've mentioned Thompson hasn't played many games um, for us this season, but I do like to have him on the bench, but he isn't today. So, Mali is going to have to drop into that deep line playmaker role, which he can do. Okay, I did mention he can do it, but I didn't realise he was that good at it. Uh, Jones is going to be a central midfielder on support. So he's a defender by trade. I don't exactly... I uh, want him bombing forward too much, although he can score long ranges. Harry Chapman has just picked up an injury as well. Oh, for goodness sake. Um, ugh. Abit is going to go on that left-hand side. Uh, what is it? Actually, he's got knee injury. Yikes. I uh, don't want to make that worse. So let's get Abit on. It's not like he can't play that role at all. Uh, Mali. He's now going to be pulling the strings in midfield, hopefully. It's kind of weird. I've got two central defenders in my midfield. Oh, Stuart's been caught out here. Oh, this is why I don't play him. This is why I don't play him. Why I have no choice. Actually, I do have a choice. Gomez is still on the bench, and we've got a, uh, we've got a kickoff highlight here. I don't like that. As we just started lumping the ball forwards just erratically. I don't know why. There is Scully. <laughs> see that coming <laughs> Tyler Smith with a hat trick and he's just told Nottingham Forest sit down I just thought this was a hopeful uh, a hopeless long ball forward uh, Hutchings wins the ball back there Scully just lays it off to Smith and Smith oh what the what a bend on that look at the bends what a way to wrap up a hat trick and it's now 5-2 to Wickham Wanderers and I just think back to a lot of the uh, high-scoring games that we've had in the last couple of years. 7-4 against Cardiff in League One last season. Springs to mind. Oh, for goodness sake, guys! Stuart, I've had enough of you. I've had enough of you. I've had enough of this man. Oh, my goodness. Right, Stuart. This is why I don't play you anymore. You're not even the most tired player on the pitch, but I don't want you there. Um, right, Gomez is going to swap with Hutchings. Hutchings is going to go in central defence. And Stewart, take a seat. Take an absolute seat. Oh my gosh. This is why I don't play Stewart at the back anymore. Another highlight here, as I'd rather just see this game out now, to be honest with you. Hutchings, who is now at the back. Mally into Jones. That's it. Just play it forward. Ah, uh, Obita. Obita. Oh. I was going to say, Obita, you're the one who with the energy man. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, hang on. Uh, excuse me. That ball crossed the line. Do not tell me that did not cross the line. I feel a little hard done by there. As we've got five minutes of injury time. Why? Why is there five minutes? I've just realised we're on uh, positive away from home. Maybe we should just drop back to balanced. Oh my god, they just smacked the bar. Good grief. It's worth noting Nottingham Forest are down in the uh, bottom three, I think, at the moment. As we are just going to waste the time down. Just regroup, hold the shape, slow the space. We have started just playing the ball to our fullbacks because Patterson's distribution is a bit erratic. We have done well to win 5-3 there, but... Oh, Stuart. <clears throat> he annoys me. We beat Nottingham Forest in a thrilling encounter. That was a bit too thrilling of an encounter, if you ask me. Uh, Chapman is out for six to eight days. We've got an international break coming up, so he'll miss the next match. And well done to Smith. A hat-trick and an assist. My goodness. Talk about good form at the moment. And that's just padded... It, it, well, I'll say padded his numbers. At least he's uh, getting on the score sheet more often. Right, we'll be back in a few days. We've only got three days until the next match against Huddersfield. Where we're going to be on the telly. Second game now against Huddersfield Town on the telly, no less. 
in case I haven't mentioned that already a few times in this episode. Uh, a number of changes have taken place though for this team. Uh, bueno back at left back, Stewart is still in defence but that is mainly because, where is he, Critchlow is tired and Matty Pollock as mentioned earlier on, has only just come back from injury, so Alfie Jones will also be stepping into defence. Fitzpatrick is in place of McCarthy, who's also tired. You'll notice a theme here throughout this 11. Gomez, Thompson and Balagizi will be the uh, midfield three. Balagizi, I don't think you've even seen him play uh, yet this season. He has played two cup games. He hasn't played any league games whatsoever. He's a National League player. Oh, why did I bring him in? I mean, he can play in a number of positions, but he's kind of been a waste, unfortunately, in bringing him in overall. Hasn't quite turned out as I've hoped so far. Chances are he'll probably be going back to... Where's he from? Liverpool. He'll probably be going back to Liverpool in January, but we'll see how he does in this game. As a as a deep-line playmaker, do I want to be risking that? We'll play him as a central midfielder. I'm not sure he can be relied upon as a uh, deep-line playmaker. A beater on the left wing with Adebayejo and Ricky J. Jones up front. Of course, have a look at my bench here. You should be able to see it. Yeah, you should be able to. You'll notice a lot of tired players. Matty Pollock is still having fitness tests, maximum of 45 minutes of action. So if he needs to come on in the second half for Anthony Stewart, so be it. Hutchings is also there as well, but he's tired, as is Dimitri and Tyler Smith. Scully is going to be sitting out this one as will Conor Malley and Critchlow and McCarthy because uh, I don't know, two games in four days does absolutely nothing for your squad, even with the uh, recovery that we do it still doesn't help at all after this game though, they've got two weeks off for internationals so here is over bar the players who are going off for international again that will be Obita and Claudio Gomez and Fitzpatrick uh, hopefully all the others can have a nice little vest as here we go TV graphics for the first time this season in the championship uh, hopefully this will be a full house here at Adams Park as Huddersfield I think they've got a new manager in Steve Cottrell so beware of Huddersfield actually having some motivation they are down near the bottom of the league but in this league I do not take that for granted at all and here we go TV under the lights here at Adams Park is, go is hoping that we actually put in a very good performance as it's been, I was about to say it's been 10 minutes and we had no uh, shots on goal but we have, although none on target. Now it's Fitzpatrick, I did talk about him in the last game and saying he's still developing so game time is going to be very very crucial for him now, not just for Wales but also for us. I don't want to be case he's the new Gareth Bale, you know, golf, uh, or what is, which way round is it? Is it Wales, no, golf, Wales, or Wales, golf, then Madrid, in that order. It's one of the two, it's a well-known meme at this point, which is even more shameful, I don't know it. I don't want to pick up in that case with uh, Fitzpatrick, as the ball just goes blazing over there. I think that was, who was that? Was that Thompson who had the shot? I can't remember the last time Thompson's actually scored a goal in anger. But I do want Fitzpatrick to be a sort of long-term project for us. There are quite a few younger players here uh, in this squad. Nowadays, so Fitzpatrick, of course, I know Dimitri, Hutchings and Scully are on loan. But there's still players that, but they've been here a while, at least two of them have, as Fitzpatrick uh, just loses the ball. This is why I still prefer McCarthy to Fitzpatrick, although uh, it's not Fitzpatrick will get better over time. One of their players has just gone down injured after having the ball displaced as oh, the chipped ball from a beater just hits uh, the top of the bar and just goes out. But there hopefully will be a lot more developments from these players, from the younger players especially, as we go through the season. There's a corner here for Huddersfield just before half-time and it is clear. It's their injured player. He's still uh, on the pitch though and they're probably trying to see him out till half-time. As the game just lags there and I nearly missed what happens but it is a header just over as yet again their injured player um, just getting on the ball. I think we need to put... If he's going to stay on... We need to just be tackling him hard as Stuart makes me nervous every single time he gets on the ball. There is Jones. What a goal there. But I think he is just offside. I just see the referee roaming forward a little bit. And this is the problem with Jones. He just doesn't beat the offside trap. Tyler Smith, he actually has that as one of its traits now to beat the offside trap. And he's mostly good at it. But Jones, unfortunately, can't do it. 
I've been trying to train him on it, but uh, the coaches are saying because he's getting on a bit now, which is a bit rubbish because Tyler Swift learnt it much, much later, uh, much older than he did. Uh, yep, you have the ability, that's fine. So I don't see why Ricky J. Jones can't learn it. So it seems kind of pointless to me. All right, we go again, second half. Here's hoping that we can get the win in front of the cameras and just make it known to the rest of... Uh, the rest of the, the rest of the world, yeah. Make it known to the rest of England, maybe, that I'm a manager on the rise. This is still effectively about me putting myself in the shop window almost as well to try and get myself a better job. Like I said before, I don't see Wickham as my forever team. I think I will be moving on. In fact, I'm 99.9% .9 sure eventually uh, we'll be moving on because I don't see Wickham uh, really. I mean, they could get to the Premier League, but I don't see them being a major force in the Premier League. Well, um, certainly in the next few years, as Adebayo has taken a knock. So we're going to be bringing on uh, one of the youngsters we were talking about. Our oh, groin injury, for goodness sake, Jones. All right, Mark Jones, this is your time to shine, boy. Oh, in fact, that's quite appropriate, actually. He's Welsh as well. We're getting a few good Welsh players here. And he's still got that four and a half star count ability. Uh, sorry, potential ability as Mark Jones. Put him in for two hundred thirty thousand from Wolves. He hasn't really played much. In fact, he's played once in a cup. But he's been injured uh, at the beginning of the season, which is why he missed so much time. And what we're going to do as well, Bueno is also tired, so what we're going to do, Greg Young is going to come on. We did make a promise to him to give him more time. And it has been 73 minutes, actually. So you know what? Uh, Stuart, get off. It's time for Matty Pollock. This is where we could really do with Scully. Because obviously his 6 for 8 frame will be very, very useful for crosses. But uh, unfortunately, uh, yeah, he's just tired. Which is a bit of a problem. That is also a problem. Who who was that in defence? Was that Jones? And it was Pollock as well. So Stuart, Stuart being off didn't make a damn bit of difference. Oh, man. I think this is one of those games we are literally just feeling tired now at this point. We're just going to have to go... We're just going to have to go higher and for it. I can't shout anymore, unfortunately, because it won't let me. But I think this is going to be one of those games... This tiredness... Our central midfield is not strong enough with Balagizi and Thompson. Just says how much we do rely on Mali and Dimitri at this point. As there is Jones, a beater. He has been known to shoot them. There is Thompson. Oh, Thompson has scored! <laughs> The old man can still do it, but he has drawn us level. I was saying, I was literally saying just before I hit record, I looked at him and just thought, he's no good anymore, is he? And he's just done that. I, I mean, you, you can't fault the effort there, can you, from Mr. Thompson? As we've got ourselves a corner here, and there is Mark Jones on his first start. Right. Drop the lines. Drop the lines immediately. Um, we are going to do all of this. We are going to slow the tempo down and we're going to waste some time. But Mark Jones with his first goal for the club and it's his first... There's not even a start. Why did I say it's his first start? It's not. But it's his first league appearance in his career. Oh no, don't do this. No, there's 20 seconds left. Oh, Fitzpatrick, you're a wonderful man. I knew I saw potential in you, Jones. Yeah, just waste the time down, lads. It's four minutes of up. Come on, ref. Blow the whistle. Blow it. Keep it simple, young. That's it. Keep it simple. Just hold on to it. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Take it to the corner. Oh, lovely. Just, uh, oh, young. Just uh, keep it simple, lads. Keep it simple. There is Jones. Oh, gosh. Patterson nearly letting that one in. Ref, blow the damn whistle. Never mind. Jones is through. If he can make this 3-1... Oh, he couldn't. It was a good chance, though. We have a corner, and now just see the time out. And that's it. It is now full time. I hate when they do those highlights from kickoff, because you don't know which way it's going to go. What a late comeback from the two players I didn't expect to do that. Curtis Thompson and Mark Jones. Uh, the Curtis Thompson one blows my mind. So, in fact, the Mark Jones one blows my mind even more. What, what a way to end a TV match as well. The fans, the neutrals would have got a great one. A great time out of that at the end. Uh, Wickham up to third in the league. Very, very pleasing. Like I said, keep ourselves in or around the playoffs. We know we're having a good season.
come from behind to win. Uh, that's an understatement. 88th and 94th minute winners. Goodness me. Let's just have a look quickly. Not just the league table, but also the stats as well. As you can see, Mark Scully is the third top scorer in the championship. McCarthy is top assist maker with eight. Uh, best player in the league, uh, 7.62. Tyler Smith not far behind him. Literally a point zero point zero one behind him in second place. Mark Scully with four player of the match awards. And I don't think, uh, I thought Patterson might have more clean sheets. He doesn't. He has five. I, I mean, look at Watford. I've had... I did say in the last episode, look at Watford, they'll come good eventually. They're top of the league. This is what money does in the championship. Right, we are going to come back probably around the beginning of January. Probably late December, early January we will be back. Because I would like to just get a bunch more games done. So Crystal Palace at home looks like a good point to come back. Maybe the FA Cup, depending who we get. But chances are it'll probably be Bournemouth and Crystal Palace as we plot. Hopefully some purchases and sales in January. If you have enjoyed this episode folks make sure that you hit the like button down below and smash the big red subscribe button. It does help the channel out and it is free to do. I thank you all so much for your support on this series and I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode.